I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. And, you know, I'm not trying to spell out these sessions that we're having. I'm not trying to spell out everything. I don't know everything. I, you know, this fullness is, this, this river that is Him is just so much and so full um, that, you know, it, it, it's just... like the parable of the sower, it's just better to just try to be good ground and let let him get his seeds into me and me. And it's, there's something to be said for instead of just trying to drink, drink it all in, just, you know, putting our face in the water and trying to drink what is running so fast that you'll never get it all in you. There's something to be said for just kneeling down at this fullness and dipping in and get what you can and put it in you and, and be on your knees and, and hold it instead of, you know, trying to understand everything. Just be good ground. Just, just be with him. Uh, there's still room for comments when the time comes, or when you feel something from the Lord. And um, uh, this could be a little bit erratic because I'm going to have to jump back and forth in a couple of places, but. Um, but we're still, what I wanted to do is try to finish off what we've been talking about and then move to another area and then drag a bit of that area back into what, what we had as familiar. <clears throat> so we're still in Genesis 2 and, and verse 9. Um, And this this is taking place um, after you know after the sixth day into the seventh day again activity activity uh, you see God you see God forming man now, he's already created now he wants to form him. And that's, that's not the creation, that's the day after. And um, as I was thinking about it, I thought, you know, I mean, first of all, just, you know, first of all, if we had a Pharisee among us, somebody would point out, well, Lord, you shouldn't be working on the Sabbath. Right? A Pharisee would do that. You shouldn't be working on the Sabbath. Talking to God. And when I thought of that thought, it came to me that Jesus said, when they were accusing him of working on the Sabbath, if your neighbor have a donkey and it fall into a ditch and you go help him out, isn't that acceptable? And then I saw it. That if you're going to give yourself the way God gives himself, selflessly, continually, like that river, if you're going to give yourself to others, not your own purposes, not your own donkey, <laughs> as it were, then he said it's okay to do that. And they didn't understand that. No, that's on the Sabbath. And he's saying, well, this is, this is higher. This is after our image and after our likeness. The Father only declaring the Son, the Spirit only declaring Jesus, the, the Jesus saying when the Spirit comes, 
oh, he's, you know, I, he said, I have to go away. And they're going, why? And he said, because the Holy Spirit has to come. He'll teach you of me. I can't speak of myself. This isn't about me. It's just about the Father and the Spirit. And that's how the Godhead works. And so here we have evidence of him continuing on our behalf to, to set things the way that, you know, so that we can enter into it. And in, um, let's see, well, uh, verse 9, and out, of the, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree. And we'll stop right there because this is, uh, it's important that we notice that it says, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow. Uh, he's already created the tree. He's already created the grass. He's already created all this stuff. He's created all of that. And if you remember when he created it, he, he said, uh, well, let the earth bring forth and let the grass bring forth and let the sea bring forth. Remember that? Once he created it, he said, let that bring forth. <coughs> let, just let her roll. But then he comes back and it says, but out of the ground, the Lord God... Uh, cause to grow. And he's going to be talking about what's in this garden. What's in the garden. So, you know, he's moving in specific ways now. He's, put, he's getting his hand in the dirt, if you will. He's, he's getting involved uh, with his purpose, with specific, specific purpose. Not just let everything roll and grow and you know bring forth and do all this, but this is this is uh, now purpose. This is now purpose. This is you know I, I'm going to make this to grow, and uh, with his with his logic, with his logos, with his own hand. He forms. He forms. So, to finish out that sentence, verse 9, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Do you remember one of the main things that tempted Eve? What is it? A tree to look at. Yeah. Yeah. So desire to make one wise. There you go. Mm. Uh, it, it was good to look on and was, you know, to make one wise, or I could just read it here again. <laughs> where, where did I put it? Um, pleasant to the sight and good for food. And this is saying that every tree in the garden, it says every. Mm -hmm. Every tree in the garden, he made that way. We thought it was only the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and that's what tempted Eve. Right? But I mean, verse 9 is clearly saying, well, let me read it again. Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, what do you suppose what do you suppose caused her to fall for this when eat the tree of life looked that way also? Hmm? Because Satan said she'd be like God. Pardon? Satan said she'd be like God. It'll be like God. Is that a dove trying to get it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Another wisdom. Another wisdom. Another wisdom. Satan's wisdom. Be be like God. Be better. Be you know. Have more. All this kind of stuff. Has God limit you to, you know? Because that's the way He words it. He's interjecting another mind, another wisdom. 
and and it's weaved in such a way that it draws something out of a living soul. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, I wrote, Eve was tempted when she saw that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was pleasant to the sight and good for food, but this other wisdom was interjected. All right, it's not my point to stay on that, but be good ground, okay? Yes. Be good ground. Just let the Lord, you know, let the sower sow not another sermon. God knows we don't need another sermon, amen? Let Him sow into us. Hallelujah. So let's skip down to verse 15 because this is closer to where we left off. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And again, this is his special garden because he planted it. He kept mentioning all along, there was, I have no man to till it, when he knew he had one man, but he wasn't a tiller at the time. He was an overlord of all things. And, but he put him in there so that he could learn to give back to God. Out of all that God has given, we should give back. There should be a give and take. Why do I say that? That's the nature of the Godhead. That's the life that was before the foundation of the world. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this, and they always declared the other. And they always were there for the other. And it was always, you, you, they didn't have to declare themselves because they were taken care of. They could freely bless the other. So God puts him in that garden and says, this garden's important to me. Can you make it, can you allow it to be important to you? even though it's pulling you away from ruling over everything and having everything, can giving back to me uh, be the highest reward that you could have? Michael was talking about this, about what he's looking for. His image, but, but his nature in us while we choose to lay down stuff, not, not, not by rules, not by commands, but by love, serve one another. Over and over, over and over, you find that love is brought up. And so, so he's looking for that. He's providing for it. And he provides for it in our lives all the time. Someone said to me during these times, you know, I forget the exact words, but it was something about it, and it's sad that we get distracted or we get tired or we get, you know, I mean, how many times, how about this one, how many times has the Lord been speaking to us when we lay down, lay our head on the bed and He starts talking to us, and we go, I'm so tired, we kind of like go to sleep. I mean, we've all done it. I've, I've done it a lot. I don't do it as much as I used to, but I... You know, in the early days, it was like, oh, he'll understand. Well, he will, but you'll do it. And you'll do that and a million other things as you put yourself first if we're not truly conformed to the image of Christ and not truly led by the Spirit because all of that's God and not truly fathered by the Father. Now, we're not God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's God. But we have been brought into oneness with Jesus. And His Spirit has been put inside of us, and Jesus' life has been put inside of us. And so it, it's, I think, to, to them, it would just be... May I use an Irish word? A lovely family. <laughs> a lovely family. You know. So, um, you know, 
it's, but it requires turning your focus from your dominion. Mm -hmm. Now, we all have areas of dominion. <laughs> we all have areas of dominion that we could turn ourselves so that we could get him. not all, you know, we're not, we're talking heart. Yeah. If you're only hearing this as law, then you've missed it. It is the desire of his heart that this would come about. So, uh, verse um, 16 and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And I think that what he's saying here to Adam is, I put you here to keep, keep my garden for me. Right? I mean, he did. He did say that. We just didn't think it had to do with the serpent. And keeping, don't let this thing come into my garden. Don't let this thing come into the place that I, I placed you in a place of fellowship. Jesus, God would walk in the cool of the evening in his garden, you know, and couldn't find them because maybe they snuck outside the garden and found some fig leaves or something. I don't know. But but there are heart issues here. It really is. It's not meant for condemnation. There are heart issues that I think are eternal. Eternal. That are, that are in God. That that the parable, a bunch of the parables really bring out. But it's not obvious because we look at the stories and we don't look for the wisdom of God, meaning the heart of God, the logos, the logic of God, the way that He thinks, the way, what moves Him. We're not looking for that. We're looking for, you know, little pockets of secret things that we get out of it, little jewels or something that we can share with someone else and impress out of, out of the parables, you know. And he's trying to impart that the way that he put it was there is that which is before the world. So um, in verse 18, it's the first time God speaks of uh, help. Help me. Uh, verse 18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help fit for him. Okay. Now, if you can just honestly let go on this issue and let your heart go on this issue of that God was the wisdom and God was the person and God was everything that was before anything was made and that that's, you know, I will, gosh, let me just, Read it again. I will open my mouth in parables and I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. If we can, if we can see him uh, jumping back in, uh, he, he's watching. <laughs> Just so precious. He's put man in his garden and he wanted for there to be this flow between them. Who knows how much it meant to God to walk in the cool of the evening with, with that. Um, and he's wanting this fellowship, but at the same time, at the same time, he's looking at the man working in his garden, working, wanting to bless him, God. God is looking at that and going, he doesn't have anybody. You know? Do you see how it just it com compounds? It just keeps building. It's one spirit. It's one desire. And so he's, he's willing to give up. Again, Jesus did it over and over and over. You know? And... Uh, 
So, so he speaks of it. It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make for him a help me, a help fit for him. And then the next verse kind of confounded me a little bit because it says, this is the very next word, I will make a hip, uh, helpmate fit for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field. <laughs> and he's like, wait, Adam's going, I could really use. <laughs> You've heard <laughs> rough here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, thanks for thinking about it, but now you're making beasts and stuff. <laughs> and the interesting thing is, is he's actually not making beasts. He's what? He's forming them. Isn't that interesting? I mean, the, the build of this thing. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called them, uh, called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Okay, so, so we go to verse 20, the next verse. And it's the second time. The second time that God speaks of that. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an help fit for him. Now, even the terminology used in the book of Revelation at the very end, you know, John is talking, or one of the angels is, uh, is talking to John and says, have you, have you seen the wife of the Lamb? It wasn't the bride of Christ, it was the wife of the Lamb. Have you, have you seen her? And John, who's one of the twelve disciples who walked and talked with Jesus and heard everything he had to say for three and a half years, goes, I didn't know there was such a thing. <laughs> you know. I, didn't, I didn't know. A wife for the Lamb? For the ever-giving one, someone who could give back, who could there could be that flow, that I'll say it like this, that Godhead feel. Yes. You know. So he says that. And he says, but for Adam there was not found and help fit for him. And I wrote, because in the same verse, Adam is uh, naming cattle and stuff, and, and uh, you know, well, I'll read it. Adam is expressing dominion by naming. <laughs> At this stage, he's, he's expressing his dominion by naming. God is forming more animals. <laughs> but there is a growing... A groaning going on. There is something extremely more important than naming animals. For Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. Now, if you see anything in this, I'm going to read to you. Just keep your place there, and I'll just read to you Romans 8, verse 20 through 20, uh, 20 through 22. For the creation was made subject to vanity. Not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Is there, do you suppose there's the wisdom of God in that somewhere? <laughs> mm -hmm. See, that's something you can meditate on. That's something that you can realize that this is going back to the creation and talking about issues. So, um, okay, so here's where I'm going to come back. Um, to verse 20 um, in a moment. But I want to I want to start what looks like a whole other thing here. If I can find it now. No, that's not it. Okay. So 
So we're going back before Adam now, which we never did. Remember that? We're going back before Adam. Genesis 1, uh, 1 and 2a, if you will. <coughs> Genesis 1, 1 and, and verse 2, first part. In the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And, and I'm going to ask you to try to not figure out the words. There's the the. There is the wisdom of God behind all the words or all the doing. There is the mind of God. There is the, the, the heart of God. There is the being of God uh, behind these things. And we, we just have trained ourselves to try to get something from the story. And, and God will show you the true meaning of the words eventually, but we take a word and we go, oh, I, oh, I think I saw that over in Exodus. <laughs> right? And we go, oh, look. Oh, when I put these two together, it, it feels good. You know? Let me get a concordance. Maybe there's, then there's, you know, a thousand words like that. Oh, I'm on to something. Well, I'm not, I'm not trying to discourage you. Keep your concordance. But I'm just telling you there's a higher heart pursuit than scholarship or you know, being scholarly about it. Um, and we can't and we will not ever get it or grasp it if we don't approach it on a heart level because you've heard the things that we've read so far and they are heart issues with God with God you know and we're we're living we we have our help meet or we have our fellowship or we have a, you know all certain amount of things that are going on and we're content and all that came from God <laughs> all of it and more than we ever would know and yet for him there's no help fit for it in this, in this tenor, in this sense, in this sense, he's not looking for worker bees. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, um, All right. So, um, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So, again, God begins as a creator. God created. In the beginning, He created. But then, after creating that, I mean, He, he does. He creates, he creates it. He doesn't just create it. Um, he doesn't just bring it into existence. God moves with purpose. And see, and that goes, I mean, again, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I keep going to this. What if his purpose was the purposes of his heart, not God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit sitting around and going, hey, I got an idea. Let's make a planet. And the other one goes, what's a planet? You know what I mean? You know, and they go, uh, hey, I like the color green. Let's make it like that. Make it our one. You know, and he's going, you know, no, that's not what I'm doing. That's not what, that's not what the words mean. That's not what it's about. Stop thinking like, what does it say? Paul said in one place, stop, was it, it was stop being, as man. Very simple phrase. Stop being as man. Okay. All right. So he, he creates, but he creates, and can we find the wisdom of God? 
He creates without form. And He creates it void. And He creates it in darkness. Light didn't come along till later. He's working in darkness. And then in verse 2b, the second part, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Can you say glory to God for that one? <laughs> okay. All you Holy Ghost people. <laughs> well, well, maybe it's more than, you know, <laughs> maybe it's more than the charismatic movement. I knew you'd get to it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, thank God for the Holy Spirit. But I mean, He is the only one that is faithful no matter what, no matter what circumstances, no matter what time of day, no matter what events going on, to declare Christ as He is. He's, he's the only one that will do that faithfully. That's why you can go to Him. That's why you can go to Him. And if you can learn to hear His language, his language will be Christ-centered. <laughs> it will be about another. The point is, it will be the wisdom of God. It will be about another. Oh, Lord, help that. This, what did Jesus say? Let these things sink down into your ears. In Luke, he said that. Um... And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. Verse 4, And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. All right. So he, he creates, but he's delving more into it. So he's becoming more of a maker. There are many scriptures in the Bible where it identifies him as a, as a maker or the maker, not just the creator, the one who brings things into existence, the maker. He says in Jeremiah, is it? Isaiah 45. Isaiah, of course it's Isaiah. Uh, you know, you've left your maker or, you know, words like that. And we go... No, I haven't. You know what I'm saying? We go, no, no, I haven't left my maker. Maybe you have. Yeah, that's right. Because you've been made with purpose. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't stop being a Christian. That's not what it's saying to you. <laughs> you. You stopped being a Christian. No, when he says you... Anyway, there's so many... You can see that there's... What this feels like is a river. What we're doing here is like a river. It's like a river of so much of Him and of, of the, you know, His wisdom and stuff that I'm not even touching on. That's flowing through here because He's talking to you about stuff He's not even saying through me, and it's flowing. And if we if if we just lay down on the ground and stick our mouth in it and hope that the right stuff shoots up into our mouth, you know, we start. You know, getting down there and trying to get that whole river into our mouth like that, we're not going to get it. How are you going to get the river? You're going to get on your knees and you're going you're gonna to have a certain spirit and a certain heart after the river, after the wisdom of God. And you're going to dip in and you're going to connect with it. You're not just going to, you know, make it flow into you somehow. You're going to connect with it and you're going to, you're going to look at it. You're going to hold it. You're going to hold some of it. And you're going to partake of that. I want this in me and I want Amen. some more. Amen. And, and that's, it doesn't happen. You, you don't get it all at once. He's too big. But you, to him that hath, shall be given more. That little handful is worth more than you could ever realize if it's the real thing. If it's the real thing. Oh, oh maybe hold it a little longer before you drink it just to get the feel of what this, this mm. 
how it feels touching you and you touching it. And then bring it on into you. Anyway, so this maker, by his spirit now, he, he forms and, and he brings forth light and he divides dark and light. He divides the darkness and the light. Right. How many of you are familiar with that? Just if you can raise your hand. He's dividing the darkness from the light. But did you notice that he brings it back together then after he does that? He brings it back together. Because ultimately all things work together for good. To them who are called according to his purpose. And we all know what the, these scriptures do We all know what these scriptures say. Maybe we don't. The words are right. To those who are called according to his purpose, to be conformed to the image of his son. But but here he is, he's he's you know, well, verse four again, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Okay, so so we can conclude that there's darkness upon the face of the earth, and the spirit moves, and God says, Let there be light, and God says, I like the light more than the darkness at this stage, right? In verse four stage. Mm-hmm. I like the light that God saw the light that it was good. I like the light more than the darkness. God divided the light from the darkness, and we go, That's the way to think. No. That's the way to think if you're in verse four. <laughs> but in verse uh, the next verse, I'm talking verse 4, yeah, okay. So, in the next verse, he, he brings it together. And I'm, I'm going to have to skip back to our Adam and Eve story at this point, but I want to add in verse 5 that he and God called the light day and the darkness he called night still separate. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Uh-huh. Did you see it? Yes. He pops them together. <laughs> and, and it is. We know, we call it a 24-hour day, or I, I guess y'all call it a day. <laughs> you know, 24-hour day includes the night and the day. Well, he intentionally is, he's, let me reword that. He is working with intention, but not according to our minds, but according to His mind and according to His heart. And if you, if you, we all love Jesus, but if you love God, to those who love God, it didn't say love Jesus. Love God is to love the way the Father and the Son interact and the way the Son and the Spirit interact and the way the Spirit and the Father interact and the way that this is eternally the self-giving, giving, giving, giving. You can love Jesus to the max and never see the love of God. So, uh, okay, so I'm going to go back now because I want you to... um, Okay, there's, there's going to be a pattern here. Um, all right. So there's a pattern here now. And we just, we just kind of read the pattern. Now, the, the, the pattern is to help us if we, if we recognize the wisdom of God or the, or the mind of God or the logic of God or the logos or whatever you want to call it. If we recognize it in that pl- in a certain place, then maybe we can be brought into it in another place, and in and in that we're not theologians bringing together scriptures and something. We're knowing God. We're knowing God, and that's what we want to do. That's, you know, okay. So this is uh, still Genesis um, chapter 2. And now we're going to go to, let me make sure. Uh, uh, for Adam there was not found a um, help me for him. So now we're going to go to verse 21. Now listen carefully, carefully, okay? Seriously. 
I mean, I'm serious. Listen carefully. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Does that sound familiar from what we just read in chapter 1? Darkness upon the face of the earth. Cause a deep sleep to fall. And and the word deep sleep here is a, a sleep so deep that it's almost like death. Okay? To fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took, this is God, and he took one of his ribs. Told you we'd talk about ribs. Instead, what did we do? We had fish and chips. But anyway, that's, that's Texas, we have ribs. <laughs> uh, and, he, and he took, he took. We also have a horrible saying in, the, or in the Texas that uh, uh, calls somebody an Indian giver. And that's when they give you something and then they want it back. You're, we call that an Indian gift. Okay. Uh, politically correct? No, nah, I've got many faults. Yeah. <laughs> I do. All right. But he took, he took, he took one of his ribs. Okay? And he closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of me, taken out of man, taken out of me. She's not dirt. Like he is. He's dust. She's not dirt. She's him. And made a woman and brought her unto the man. Okay, and this now bone of a bone. Okay, and shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked. And the man and his wife were not ashamed. I'm not, I'm not drifting off into a spiritual land. I'm looking for my next notes. All right. So Genesis 2.20 says this, And Adam, uh, uh, he had given names to all of the beasts and cattle and all that, but there was not found. But everything was good because God declared it was good. Before she came along. Okay? It was good. Everything was made by God. Can we argue with that? Everything was good. And He said it was good. And it was made by God. But it wasn't complete. Complete doesn't mean an accident on God's part. You need to meditate on that thought. An incomplete before she comes on the scene doesn't mean that God made a mistake. In fact, she came about out of love from God's heart first. And then looking at the man and then from his uh, his heart to her. There you got it. There you have it. There's the Godhead right there. Now they're not God. You understand. But um, so um, so there's this. Um, 
so there's he's taking this man and um, where's what I put it and he took what Adam already had in him he took something that Adam <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was going to come to this. <laughs> That's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> and he took what Adam already had in him that God put in him. And brought it out of him. And formed what was unformed and incomplete. Mm. Okay, do you have any clue of something like that happening anywhere else in Genesis? The creation. The creation. In the beginning. Then the forming. Yeah. It was, it was without form and void. Are you listening? <laughs> I know you're out there. I hear you breathing. Uh, it's the same story. Hallelujah. It's the same work. It's the same mind. It's the same wisdom. It's the same God. It's the same logic. It's the same logos. And, and if you get a chance later on, you should read it and compare those two. Maybe even get you two Bibles together so you can really look at it and go, Oh my God, look at this. He's doing the same thing, but on another level. He's working towards one end. We thought the creation was just to make a planet for mankind or something like that. It was the same as what he was doing for Adam and Eve and bringing them together because it's wisdom that was before the world. It's God, the way God thinks, the way God is. So, uh, I'll read that again. He took what Adam already had in him. All right. So, you know, God puts certain things in us that we don't even know are in us. I'm talking about on the spiritual level. I'm talking about you don't even know certain things that he's been building in you with, with Scripture and things like that, that one day he'll touch that and it'll just go, Whoa! The Spirit of God is always working. He never, he never stops wanting to declare Christ. Hallelujah. And then Jesus comes down and says, you know, well, you know, they say, well, this, you weren't supposed to do this work on the Sabbath. And he goes, I didn't do it. My father did. My father. And they go, are you, are you playing chess with us? <laughs> no. No, I didn't do it. It's not a lie. I didn't do it. See? And so we learn to lay back into really the, the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the triune God, to lean back into them and learn them and let them build within us uh, that which is truly in the image of God, let us mm. make man. Yes. They're all in agreement because they're all working towards one end. Mm. Let us make man in our, us three's image. After, mm. oh, now we're nailing it. After our likeness. Mm. See? So he's not trying to make you a father. And he's not per, you know, necessarily trying to make you a son. And he's certainly isn't trying to make you a Holy Spirit. But he is bringing you into something, a flow, that is beyond one person. Amen. The way God, God is love. You know that, right? God is love. That's what it says. God is love. And, and his kind of love we, one of the things we say about it is that he is sacrificial. He's sacrificial, but it's not really sacrificial to them. Their love isn't sacrificial. 
It's just God. You understand what I'm trying to say? I mean, I'm, it's, these are weird concepts if you never heard them, but the, they're just who they are. They have no rule book. They have no Bible. They have none of that. They function off of nature. And their nature is one in essence. But they're, they're three, three in one. Three persons in one essence. And that essence is very simply said, sorry if this is too simple, but it's love. God is love. And so we can learn, we can, we can, so let's go back to the very beginning of all this sharing. We can go and start digging into the Bible to learn the wisdom of God. Or let's change the subject and say the love of God. And we can, we can dig around there, but we're not going to find it by doing that. And we're not, certainly not going to find it by trying to figure stories out. There's a wisdom behind that. There's a love behind that. There's a spirit behind that. And it doesn't, it doesn't you know, uh, just come to you, uh, especially if you're, um, you're trying to, you know, formulate a sermon or something like that without just seeking Him and wanting Him and loving Him. And until that, that, Spirit, which is Him, God in you, through and Christ is the door, of course, we know that. Until that's working in us, any amount of love that we're trying to give back will be a different kind of love. I mean, just think about it. See, you don't have to believe anything I've said over these last four days, okay? I'm not asking you to believe it or whatever. And you just meditate on it. Just think, do what you've been doing, where you've you know, been playing soccer and kicking the ball around. You know? Where you're talking, letting it roll through your being or through your consciousness and, and trying, to, trying to hear what he is trying to say. Because I knew going in, I, I can't impart this. I can't impart it. I can hope that the Spirit of God puts seeds there but greater than seeds is where we are, are captured, where yeah. we're captured. And we're brought in because we're captured and enraptured at the same time. And it is, it is transforming our being. Be, don't be conformed to this world, but be, be transformed by what? Another mind, another wisdom, another... And, and it's all Him. See, it's all Him. Whether you say mind or wisdom or this or that, it's all Him. So let me see if I had anything left here. All right, so I'm going to just go back real quick to this um, creation story because I felt like the connection wasn't as clear as maybe it should have been. Uh, but uh, verse 5 of the... the uh, Creation and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. So he called light day and he called night or called uh, darkness night. He, he called, at the very beginning he called darkness night. He didn't call it sin. He didn't, didn't call it Satan. He called it night. Okay. Oh, and he didn't call it confusion. <laughs> he called it night. And then, then, when combined together and not separate, together they are called the first day. You've made it through the first day. <laughs> no, think about it. I mean, let the Spirit of God breathe on that. Yeah. Together, one, if you keep them separate, then you're, you're in a battle, not just uh, with the devil, uh, you're in a battle of, of not having the insight, the, the mind, the, the, the wisdom of God to, to understand completeness as He does these things. So we're, you know, it's always adversarial. And He's taking 
darkness, and he's and today, and then he's called it all day. Mm. What? Mm. Well, he can do whatever he wants, can't he? Yes. It doesn't have to make sense to us. But let's get on the train. <laughs> Man. All right, then I wrote that soon there'll be many more days mm. of night mm. and light that will come together and put another day behind you. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, lastly, uh, I wanted to uh, give you some scriptures. And so I'm asking you if you're, I know some of you are recording on your own as well as we're recording here, but it would probably be a good idea if, if you just wrote the reference down. Okay, I'll read it to you. But, uh, but the first one um, is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 4 through 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 4 through 8. Now, now, once you get it written down, just listen for the wisdom of God, okay? And my speech and my preaching were not with enticing words of man's wisdom. God's not trying to impress anybody or be anything. He just is. The Bible says... We read it wrong, but it says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. It doesn't say, Do holiness. He says, Be what I am. Excuse me, I get a little round up. <laughs> anyway, and my speech and my preaching were not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. But the power of God, howbeit how we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. That means mature, not perfect. Um, yet not the wisdom of this world. And see, the wisdom of this world, I don't know what you might think the wisdom of this world is, but it is anything that is the opposite of the way that he thinks. I'm sorry, but it is. Okay. Um, and not, but, but not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom. Are you loving this? Or, you know, even uh, the uh, wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world Unto our glory. Hallelujah. Thank God for that last part. Mm -hmm. See this? He's not... What, is that, what do you think that means, Randy? I think it means he's not trying to hide it from us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. but, but we have to leave all our stuff. Man, we've, religion has, has polluted us. Hi. Oh, I thought you were waving at me, Steve. I thought that's the way you wave now. Uh, nor are the princes of this, okay, um, uh, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Okay? All right, next one is um, 1 Corinthians 4 5. 1 Corinthians 4 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. Who both will bring to what? Light. Let there be light. Get it? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Bring to light the hidden things of darkness. Mm -hmm. We think, oh, he's going to show up. He's going to show little demons in the room. Or, you know what I mean? Something like that. Instead of show his wisdom of how he uses both. All things work together for good. If you don't believe that, then you don't have the mind of Christ yet on that front. All right. Uh, the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts and then shall every man have praise of, not Jesus, God. Do you see it? It's saying, it's speaking incredibly loud. <laughs> Okay, okay, still, uh, now we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 through 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 2 through 7. 
but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. We're all trying to shove it into our little gourds. And he's wanting a manifestation of that nature for one another and towards God. Manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds. That's darkness without form and void right there. It is. It is, yeah, it is. It's a, uh, of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, and Jesus didn't preach himself, and the Father didn't preach himself, and the Holy Ghost didn't preach himself. <clears throat> and we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Where is this coming from? Genesis. Genesis. There we go. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. God. God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Is that just incredibly powerful? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. That was the last one. So, Father, we thank you for surrounding us with beauty. We thought it was Ireland. We see that there is a wisdom, there is a heart, there is a motive that is pure and beautiful and gentle. We see that, Father, we, we saw in the garden you as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The way that you create, the way that you move. We see your gentleness in relationship to Adam. We see your creative power bursting forth in the in the first chat first verses of Genesis and then we see it bursting forth in in Adam being brought into darkness and having something in him that was without form and void and you reach in and you bring forth another after your kind to have that same spirit of giving and loving yeah. and you are more than words and you're more than prayer <coughs> prayer words and father just in closing in this prayer that you may help us to not waterboard ourselves with drink and sticking our head in the water and the river and trying to get everything we can but to be patient and to be with you in it and to trusting you and by handling the word not deceitfully but by reaching dipping into it and filling our hands and filling the, the the agreement between the water and the touch and drinking it and putting it in us and letting it build in us father until we reach in more and, and with each drink father we are taking in more of you instead of scriptures and sermons and ideas. and So I ask that your Holy Spirit would be spread upon us, Father. If that was your dove trying to get in, we're sorry if we're blocking him. We just want you. So in your timing and in your way and in your wisdom that is above ours, and yet we are coming into it. And have your way in our lives and in our days. And make our days darkness and then night, or light and then night, and then blend them together.
and then let you do what you want to do in those days and then let it fall behind us to the next day. Yes. Yes. And we ask you in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen.